but literally fishing has been my entire life. Growing up in Spain, uh, that's all I did, you know. Uh, growing up as a kid, I remember walking into the beach and, and doing some of the surf casting and uh, it was just a cool thing to do, you know. Uh, thanks to my dad that introduced me, I started fishing from the beach and later on I started fishing on a boat and very soon realizing that the most effective technique to catch big fish, specifically in Spain, yeah, jigging. And when I moved to Florida, I remember seeing the guys catching all this grouper in three, four hundred feet of water, and it was like, wow, this is deep. And I see people's reactions, you know, people's faces. Uh, when you tell them, you know, we hunt cranking in 300 feet of water, they'll go, oh wow, you're crazy. Um, that was like the fire right there. I remember looking at the NOAA uh, fisheries and they'll post a bunch of stuff on the deep water. You know, you always see these, these crazy fish uh, on the deep water. And I, I just, for the first time I saw a wreckfish, you know, and I was like, wow, what is that, you know? Thing that it just looks like it doesn't belong here. It looks like a, looks like an alien. You know, it's just like a grouper with like thick skin, ugly. Uh, I was really intrigued by it. Um, started doing some research, and I couldn't find anything. I couldn't find anything for months. I talked with all my fishing buddies. Uh, some of my some of my friends actually called some up in the northeast. Uh, they they're a lot shallower, you know. But down here in Florida, all that you hear is like these crazy stories that, yes, like 10, 20 years ago, the commercial fishermen used to catch them, blah, blah, blah. But I never seen photos of it. Um, only one of my friends down here uh, caught one while surf fishing. It was crazy, you know, we've been trying to find all this information and calling all these people and nobody really has the spots, you know, it's just so hard. I must have called at least 20 captains. Some, some, there were some reports of these crazy wreckfish, you know, and I'm, most of you probably never seen what a wreckfish is, you know. Don't feel bad, like I, I didn't either until just, you know, a year ago. When you search online, these fish are supposed to live from 800 foot of water to 2400 feet of water. So, go and figure, you know. I was filming a, a video with Black Thief H, and this guy Logan was on the boat. Past, uh... And from the moment I saw Logan, we just kind of like click, you know, he's one of these guys, like a fishy guy, you know, a fishy dude. We start talking about fishing and we start sharing photos. And I say, you know, this is some cool stuff that we caught a front and whatnot. And, and he, out of the blue, pulls up this photo of a wreckfish. And I'm like, what are you doing, you know? Where is this fish? I need this, you know, I've been searching for this. And Logan goes like, yeah, man, I, I've been searching for it as well. Like, that's my spot. I'm like, oh, I get it, I get it. So we carry on the conversation and I saw him some photos. You know, I, I recently caught a few like nice yellow edges out from here and they're pretty rare, you know, and he's like, whoa, whoa, I, I want that one, you know? And I'm like, all right, well, this sounds like a deal. So I'll take you to my yellow edge spot and you take me to your wreckfish spot. And we did it. The next day, we jumped on Colin's boat. I took him to my yellow edge spot. He went down, caught his yellow edge, and we went home. Now, Logan was engaged and about to get married, okay? So he disappeared, of the, he was gone. You know, he, he got married over the summer, and I keep texting him. I'm like, hey, Logan, you know, I'm happy for you, but you need to take me, you know? And, and Logan was so sweet, and he, he told me, you get ready. I will call you with 24 hours in pumps because Logan is super busy and I'm busy as well. I, I go with um, I go with Kevin and I said to Kevin, Kevin, we gotta build a thousand gram rod. You know, we, we're gonna catch this fish in a thousand, in 2,000 plus feet of water. And Kevin is like, okay, you know, he's overwhelmed. And uh, off we go. You know, we, we had some blanks, we have some ideas. We we knew we kind of knew what we needed to do, and we start building these rods. You know, we went through different layouts, different blanks. And, came up with something that looked good. Um, it just happened to be testing these new jigs, you know, the semi. And we made, made the semis all the way up to a thousand grams. So I said to Kevin, you know, we have this jig, we're gonna fish in 2,000 feet of water. I had this very specialized reel, 10 pound line. And literally, we got ready for, for it, even not knowing that it would ever happen, you know. And, and I remember talking with Kevin, he's like, 
you crazy. And I'm like, well, listen, this is a lifetime opportunity. You know, if, I don't know if it's ever going to happen, but I, I want to be ready. Uh, it must be like two months after Logan got married. I tested him and I said, hey, it looks good tomorrow. And Logan said, we got it. We jumped on the boat. We didn't get up early, you know, we, we left the dog at 9.30, jump on the Kong, he has this beautiful Kong 33, and run. So we ran to the spot about, about an hour and go to the spot. Go to the spot and then Logan says, right here, George, get ready. And anybody else, any other fisherman that'll take you to their spot, they will be trying to fish it or anything. Logan was so cool about this thing. Like, Logan told me, hey, this is your time. You gave me the yellow edge and did you get your fish? And I'm like, okay. I remember telling Colin, get ready, get the camera, get every angle. And I'm excited. I didn't know this is happening, okay? This, I have no idea this is gonna happen. I fished in 2,000 feet of water a couple times. We are dropping in 2,400 feet of water. A two pound jig with 10 pound line, hand crank. I didn't just want to do it by electric. I wanted to hand crank. And I believed on, on, on Logan, but you know how it is, it's fishing. Sometimes you go out there, they, you catch fish there before, but you go back, those fish are not there. Yeah, my rod is loaded. You see how it's loaded, does it come back? And I just remember like, looking at the screen for a second, and 2,400 feet of water, okay? This is the deepest, craziest thing I've ever done. And I remember thinking for a second, stopping and thinking like, this is what Think Deeper is about. Many of you ask all the time, what is Think Deeper is about? It's about pushing the limits. It's about putting yourself out there. It's about doing stuff that nobody's done. It's about enjoying the process. And that's what, exactly what I was doing at that moment. I was about to drop and I'm like, I want to inspire other fishermen to push the boundaries. And I did. You know, I dropped down, took about seven or eight minutes to get to the bottom. All right, let's try this again. Attempt number two. On the first drop, uh, I was dropping and something grabbed my jig. Based on the fact that the, the way that the fish was running, First they thought it was a squid, but I, I think after talking, it was something like shaking his head. And then when the fish realized it was hooked, he just started running and I got uh, my my little, just about my little just popped. I think it was just tail wrap and he broke it. So. How many feet per second you think you're dropping right now? Probably four feet per second, three, four feet per second. So I figured 180 feet. Per minute. minute? Yeah. So, and I was just probably two minutes into the first drop, so. Yeah. That's a really good question. We should come out with them and put the table. Be about us, so we know. Yeah, no, it's gonna take a while. It's gonna take a while. Hopefully something else drops on the, the fall. You know, guys, this is the first time we're using the actual finished production jig. So this is the first time we use this jig. This is a new jig. I think it works. I think it works, right? <laughs> it's absolutely destroyed. And now we're just going to take it easy. See what we reach by. Um, I, you know, there has to be other things that I've never dropped a jig here to catch, so I'm excited for this just as much as you are. Yeah. What do you think is our chance to catch something on the jig here? It's, from what I've seen from your you know, actions before, I think it's pretty good. Start fishing, the rod is performing well, the line is performing well. I feel good, you know, when you're fishing and you feel good. So it felt really good, really comfortable. So my jig is now almost like over half a mile below me. And I'm still in contact with it. And what I'm doing is it's a very slow moment. I want to keep it tied to the bottom. I don't know if you can see the screen, but there's a big relief. 
and these fish that I want to catch are close to the bottom, so it makes sense for me to stay. Oh, it just feels so weird, guys. <laughs> really slow, so I want to come out three, four crowns and let that jig fall. Three, four. When you are in this deeper water, it doesn't matter what rod you're using, what line or what reel, your jig becomes less reactive. Ooh. That was a bite. So I'm, I'm doing this, I'm moving the jig, I'm working, I'm believing on it. So on the first drift, we're like 10, 15 minutes into this drift, and I'm about, you know, I'm starting to scope out a little bit, and I'm about to start reeling up, and then Logan says, George, trust in me, leave it on the bottom. Our odds are pretty good. So let's Conditions. It's all on me now. Logan put us on them. We know they're here. I don't know if I'll be able to do it. It's amazing. So I know I'm ready, but I don't know what to expect. And so all of this is happening at the same time. But all that I put in my head is like, I want to inspire other people to do this. I hit bottom. I start jigging, start working that jig, nice and slow, tied to the bottom. These fish are on the bottom. I know that Logan is feeding me this information. Stay, stay tied to the bottom. So I'm doing this, I'm moving the jig, I'm working, I'm believing on it. So on the first drift, we're like 10, 15 minutes into this drift. And I'm about, you know, I'm starting to scope out a little bit. And I'm about to start reeling up. And then Logan says, George, trust in me, leave it on the bottom. So, you know, we communicate and we, we're making it happen. And I remember hitting bottom, cranking twice. I came up. Pump one time. She feels so weird, guys. Let it loose, and I was on. I was yeah, on. This fish is spilling drag. This fish is ki kicking my butt. You know what I mean? Like with, I'm with 10 pound line. I have a big fish connected to my line, 2,400 feet away from me. This is the craziest thing I've ever experimented in my life. Of all my life fishing, any other any other type of fishing that I've done, had nothing compared to this. I'm hyped up. I'm super excited, but now I'm um, starting to freak out. Uh, just because so moved now all, all the time that I've been searching for this fish, all the people that I told I'm going to make it happen, all of that is falling in my back. The pressure is on. I'm tight, I have 10 pound line, 80 pound liter. This fish is so far away from me, he's running. And you can see me just working. I just believed on it. I just kept like... <laughs> Mr. George. I guess Logan was right. So, I'm, I'm reeling, I'm cranking, getting line in the reel. Good. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Regardless what happens. Hopefully it's the right one. Be always thankful. Man, I've been waiting for Logan's call for a year. I swear, but I actually call him. But, <laughs> to accept my call for a year. I was waiting for you to get back from Spain, and, okay? Yeah, ah, so grateful. <laughs> Can't believe we hooked up. Second drop, <laughs> second drop, you're down and tight. It's starting to blow Again. up. Again, huh? It's starting to blow up already. Really? Yeah. Okay. Oh, it feels so good. It was like, I wish you guys could be here to see this. Freaking epic. Sometimes you come out here How and How much just, drag you got on there, George? I don't have a lot. Remember, we got all the time in the world, so he's gonna, he's gonna make a couple runs. If it's the fish I think it is, he's gonna make a couple runs. He's not just gonna. Yeah. It's, it's like drag, you know, eight pounds. Okay. Taking it easy. I'm gaining, that's the only thing that matters. For me at this point. Keep the head straight up so we don't get the giddle plates. So. Amazing. I'm still here, guys. <laughs> I was telling Logan like, how grateful I am because. The opportunity of coming out here and, and doing these, and it's just like the odds of like actually these happening are pretty slim. Like it's really, it's really hard. You need weather, you need equipment, you need faith. <laughs> you need a lot of stuff. And then you need to be a little lucky as well to be able to see the fish. 10 pound line is it's always super technical. Uh, you, look, you can see the head shakes right now. Like I just buy one of the 
This tree's still like Can you, you remember string probably 1500 foot on, under me. I know guys have been going for a long time, but <laughs> this is a pretty epic comeback. <laughs> Just been busy, you know, yeah. um, you at the warehouse and trying to get everything lined up. And, uh, I hope you guys are enjoying like fishing with the rest of the team as well. Super proud. Um, man, it's just a good time. It's a good time when you're hooked in 2,000 feet of water. <laughs> Brain, please stay on the line. Please stay on the line. Couple runs. And Logan during the whole process is helping you with the boat. Call him behind the camera, like it's freaking hell. Way. I can see oh. his face, I can see the tension yeah, in the air, right? It's he's happening. For. And but it, whatever it is, it took us about 45 <laughs> minutes to reel it up. Well, they they were bars, it ain't what I'm longest for, so. 45 minutes of my life. Hopefully, it's what you're looking for. So, I've been reeling this thing for 45 <laughs> minutes, you know, you and all of a sudden, it's just completely slack. I'm freaking out, okay? I'm freaking out. Remember, I've been chasing this thing. I look at Logan, and Logan goes, George. So okay, just keep reeling. This is what they do. And I, I just keep reeling, I'm just not thinking. All of a sudden, just bubbles. Bubbles everywhere, about 100 yards from the bow, we start seeing these mega bubbles, just like you have two or three divers underneath you, you know? And immediately after, this beautiful wreck fish just floats up. Like literally, oh my God! There it was. Like, yeah. it's almost it's like so I've heavy. been preparing for this my entire life, right, guys. you know? I was on top of the wall. Uh, I mean, I was the happiest guy on the wall in that moment just because I achieved something that I wanted and just because so many people told me that this was impossible. And, and thanks to Logan, thanks to the entire team who were able to achieve it. So that was, that was the jig. This is going on the wall. <laughs> and you know, just like my mom say, you always had to be ready for the luck. And I was ready for the luck. I hope this inspired you guys to push the boundaries, to think deeper, to don't let anybody tell you what it can be done or not. You are, you own your own decisions. You have a dream, go and do it. Because it's probably gonna happen.